So welcome to the Manchester Table Demonstrator. This is a piece of kit that was built to communicate some of the challenges we face in our cities going forward. And this is the start point for the evolution of a tool that we hope will be of use to planning authorities. As you can see, we have a number of infographics here which uh, describe the modes of transport that are moving through the city of Manchester. Um, I should say this is a model driven user interface. Um, so the Saturn strategic model that underlies this user interface and drives the, the movement of traffic around the city. Um, we have a DFT algorithm here which allows us to show the, predict the predicted rise and growth of, uh, of residents in the city, pollutions, uh, noise, noise levels generated. And we also have a wheel here that allows us to play around with the innovation levels um, in, the, in, the, in the forms of transport that uh, will be available. So as you can see, as innovation grows, the options and modes of transport grows. With no innovation, moving from 2010, 2020, and into 2030, there's very little growth. There's a small adoption of e-cars there. But uh, innovation um, and integration is vitally important to the success uh, of our, and our ability to continue to use the existing infrastructure but grow its capacity. Um, and as you can see there, the various uh, transport providers, the more they integrate, the more joined up things are. Um, ticketing and booking of payment systems are all one system for example but it's similar to the uh, Oyster card in London and the impact on the environment is great. So this is fantastic but what about the people who live and move around the city? For this particular demonstrator there's only five, uh, sorry, four examples of, of uh, civ uh, civilians and how they move around the city. Uh, our first example here uh, is a recent student. She lives in shared apartments on the, other side, on the eastern side of Manchester and works over here. And using the Saturn model, we are able to calculate the route that she's most likely to take. So in 2030, with loads of innovations, she's probably going to use an e-bike. And you can just about see the route that she'll possibly take. And today, she uses a push bike, so small change uh, in motor transport, the same route. And innovation is very little impact on her route. So we look at 2020 for example and uh, go to set off on the journey so you'll simply you can see the line moves down and, and the, the routing is based on, on the algorithms uh, and the street model and of course the um, behaviours that this particular character uh, exhibits. So um, you can see here her main motivation is minimal cost. I mean actually today she pays nothing because the push bike's paid off. Um, again, in the future, time reduces with an e-bike, uh, small amount of CO2, and costs her a pound for that journey. The interesting, from a, the interesting thing from a strategic point of view is how, what interventions might affect the way she behaves in her journey throughout the city. So, for example, if we introduce roadworks, well, actually, as a bike user of a bike and uh, they've got the ability to ride on pavements and, and cycle around the traffic. It's not going to really affect your journey. But introduce factors such as bad weather, and the model is now assuming that uh, the bike is no longer an option, so what's the closest and cheapest alternative? As you can see, it's now costing her £3 as opposed to a, a pound, a uh, fraction less time to journey, and a bit more CO2. And um, other factors that we can start to think about, and these pucks can be programmed to do anything, but in this particular instance we have uh, some set parameters, some set options. Um, we can see what other, so it, the if increase in the frequency of trains, how does that affect our journey? And you can see the overall impact and the change over here. Um, another use case um, is a family who um, live on this western side of town, drop the child off at daycare and then travel into the office. So in 2020 with moderate levels of innovation, which they're probably going to use an e-car, e drop the child off and then they get into town they're actually going to use an Uber-like style service where they can offer the spare seats in the car to other commuters 
and thereby reducing the cost of their journey and uh, increasing capacity on the road, so less vehicles. Um, so what other policies and can be influence their journey? So for example, the park and ride scheme, whereabouts, in what proximity to the daycare centre will they actually decide to park and take the bus? Uh, will roadworks affect their behaviour? So I can turn around and influence, you know, if we actually get close enough to their house, they're going to use the bus for the entire journey, um, actually regardless of the, uh, the park and ride. So um, this particular model has only got a couple of uh, representation, representatives of this populace. Um, in the future, we hope that we can start to introduce into similar type models um, uh, multiple assimilated population. So people and zones uh, set up for residential and industrial commercial areas and we can start to understand the impact of people living in a certain area with different types of lifestyles um, and how they will move around the city. Um, I think probably that, that's probably a couple of years off but uh, in the immediate future can we build a multi-layered version of this driven by models and different data that allow local authorities to very quickly interact with the models that they've created and so far have very little access and control over. Can we, what, what are the challenges associated with this and who can, who can be, who are the appropriate software developers that will push this type of concept through to reality. So really looking forward to getting your feedback from the questionnaires you've been sent and uh, look for, watch this space. Thank you.